Yeah, Taya, are you the one talking, please? Yes. Okay. Good on, how, how now? I'm good doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Yes, good, good afternoon. Ladies and yeah, gentlemen, I think it's. I I want to commend her for a great presentation. I particularly admi admire the fact that she has gone beyond the field. I mean, this is a walk back of with a lot of field work. Thank you very much, Dr. Please, let's give a, a platform to Professor A. O. Solomon. Sir. sir, please, platform for you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank the presenter. She has actually done a very good uh, uh, job and um, she has been able to at least bring us from, you know, the starting point to where we are today. I just want to add a few things about uh, the environmental aspects of uh, cassiterite mining. You see, one of the things we now know about uh, uh, cassiterite is that it is associated with other minerals which are radioactive. So the actual environmental impact of uh, uh, mining thing on the plateau uh, to me is more than uh, what uh, has been highlighted so far. You see, when you go to these mineral processing uh, plants around around yours, you will see huge deposit, I mean, huge pileup of waste that are not, not kept properly. They are not reburied. And uh, the rain will come every year towards this thing to the streams. Mm. And from the streams, you see people going back over there to go and fetch sand for building. So gradually, buildings that uh, were erected between 1970 and today in major of uh, 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 radiations from them because uh, the, the sun that is used in uh, uh, molding the blocks are already polluted with uh, radioactive minerals. So you see people living in houses where they are just exposed to uh, a lot of uh, 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 radiations that in most cases are even far beyond the, uh, uh, the permissible limits. So she has talked about the social, the economic, and uh, some part of the environmental aspect. It is not just the, the, um, uh, the mine ponds and things like that that are left open in the bush that is a problem, but even within the town, just drive around Zaria Road, you see that the pavement that people are passing through you know, this pedestrian uh, 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 walkway is being used uh, for drying uh, uh, these materials. And the rain will wash these things to the rivers and streams, and people will go there and fetch uh, substance to make blocks. And gradually, everybody is, uh, is suffering this. So if something is not done about this, you will see elevated uh, 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 radioactivity within uh, the, the living environment. I mean, you, the houses and things like that. And uh, with time, it will also result to what we don't want, uh, very high cancer rates all around us. Thank you very much, the, the presenter, and uh, thank you very much, the host. We hope that we'll be getting some of these uh, uh, presentations uh, regularly, and it will help everybody to know what is happening in our, in our environment. I thank you all. All the other people that are listening to, I want to thank you for finding time to, to stay and uh, listen to this wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. It's not in the class. Yes, thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to the uh, madam, um, Mrs. Izzy Umwa, for that great pre uh, presentation. But my question to her is, she keeps saying the, the miners, are keep, they are jumping from one side to another. And I'm saying to myself, what is the government doing about it? Cautioning these miners. Or are they going to wait till there's a physical or environmental disaster? 
before the government do something about it. Because I don't see them initiating any form of restoration in this side that they are going constantly. And to me, I'm very, very worried. I'm worried. So I hope she can answer my question. Okay. Thank you very Thank much you. for your question, Isabel. Um, our engineer, Mrs. I, I don't know whether you are. Did you hear her? Yes, I heard her. Okay, okay. I heard her clearly. Thank you very much. In fact, that was even what uh, necessitated my research into this. I have um, I have some colleagues that work with the federal ministry, and also I have some colleagues that work with the state ministry. So I I have I have asked that question over and over the years, and the answer I still keep getting is the number one thing they will tell you there's no fund that the the allocation like you know the 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 mineral the tax of the mineral as in, is a, a, a mineral is like an exclusive list. Where what this might be, even the the former miners what they pay go to the to the to the federal government and the main people they act with is like the the, the former ones which when you count a, a thousand artisans before you can get one former teen miner from there I now ask, okay as a as a government what do you people do I you go to some ministry let's say the federal ministry for instance now you ask. When was the last time there was an environmental audit? Like I explained in that slides, in fact, you, for you to even get an officer, because the, the problem is, you know, I'm on, a, I'm on a presentation, so there are things I have to hold back to. My research was deep. I can say that there's inefficient workers who don't have workforce. Because if you are to count the numbers of mining engineer in the plateau, um, the, the, the plateau, the, the, the federal, that's, you know, they have the federal ministry and then the state ministry. If you are to count the numbers of geologists there, the numbers of mining engineer there, you and me will agree that it is not, not even enough. But there's this uh, committee that comprises of um, the, the 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 environmental people the mine ministry of mines and a lot of tissues so it is their work their sole terms of reference was supposed to look at this but believe me with my based on my research now for like five years now before i now took interest in it, i don't think that yeah thank you for that uh i think um that is actually why all of us are here we are trying to make the people that are supposed to do their job, do their job. We want our voices to be heard. We want these issues to be resolved. If mining is within the exclusive list of the federal government, federal government also should be responsible and should actually live up to their expectation uh, in terms of uh, sustainability of our environment. Because in the nearest future, if we are all interested in mining and we're not interested in our environment, I think we might not see anywhere to, to live and our children today wouldn't see anywhere to live. That is the essence of what we are doing. So I think it is high time government got into these services, especially when it comes to extension services and those advocacy and some people that are actually in, um, uh, responsible for some of this uh, environment. Uh, I think it is something that needs an urgent attention because if, the miners and the artisanal miners keep on degrading the environment and there is nothing like rehabilitation plan, there is nothing like resuscitation plan, and you think that this wouldn't get to a time where everybody will be um, you know, infected or affected. Because if there's a particular issues that are on rise within a vicinity, you wouldn't, you wouldn't tell where it's coming from because at the end of the day, most of these elements actually relates into the environment, especially natural creeks, and waters, and it could contribute to some of these diseases and issues medically or health-wise we are talking about. So I think it's a thing of a collaborative efforts, um, efforts um, um, within the, the sector for the government to hear and understand what is going on. Um, thank you. Uh, I think um, right now we have, I thought we have, uh, okay, I'll have Mitchell. Please, can we um, invite Mitchell for our contribution or question? Good afternoon, everyone. Engineer, I, I must commend you for a very great uh, presentation. I have a question to ask. Um, when I was uh, growing up, 
um, I always knew that the drug is known for tin mining. But recently, you don't really hear. Um, Uh, hello, Madam Mitchell, are you still on? Sagido, we can't hear how. Okay. In your mat, are you there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Did you hear her question? The, I try. I didn't really get it because it seems she said while she was growing up, there was mining and. You no, know, the summary so of our question is why is it that there are a kind of um, a low interest? Um, from the side of the government in terms of uh, tin mining in Jos. Because it seems that uh, from the history, she said that there was an, uh, an intensive activities of tin mining, and there are these um, growing interests of this, um, tin mining in Jos. But it seems in the recent time, there are these, um, there are these uh, low interest in tin mining. Uh, do you have any reason for that? Yes, I would, I would like to uh, attribute that to the price of tin internationally. Because if you look at where tin was coming from, the, the mechanized mining that took place in Jaws, compared to now the price of tin, you might say the price of tin is not encouraging. But believe me, the, 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 I feel the government doesn't just want to do. Mind you, some persons are into these artisans and are also into them. So in a way, I feel it is at times it's an attempted attempt to distract people from looking into tin and maybe try to look at it and know, and you will even hear people tell you that uh, the price, uh, the, the, the grade, the grade of what they are getting, the grade of what they are getting is not, is not, is not what, and another thing they do that, it's not that they are not doing uh, the sum of, it's not that the government is not aware of the tin mining. They try to cover the tin mining with the columbite mining. You know, there's columbite, and then there's tin. So it is easy for somebody that is into mining to tell you, I am into columbite. You know, the associated mineral. So the tin will tell you, ah, how was the grade of, of, of the tin in what it is columbite. So it's like, there's a, I don't know how to, it's like, will I say corruption? Like I tell you the, 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 the factor, the, there's corruption. And also the, the, the grade truly, is part of the factor that we accept it. But it is not that if the government want to step up, it's not that there are no deposits. It's just that there are no research. Even the government on itself is not even, okay, at least, okay, if you don't want to tell us, why don't you want to go into it? What and what are the research you have carried out that you now feel it is not an interesting sector? Because some of the friends and people that I have that are into the scene formally, they are making it. They won't say, Okay. Uh, it, it, like the ministry where they go will not be seen, is not an interesting sector to them. That's all I would say. Thank you. Okay. Uh, another question is coming from Joseph Achan. Um, would you tell us the security situation at the mining um, uh, locations in play to uh, uh, currently? What do you think about the security situation? Security wise, it is not, I wouldn't say it is bad, but the part that is bad are those abound most of the sites I, I let me let me let me give you an example there's this site at um dogona hawa for those of you that know just in this site in dogona hawa the it's like the way they they, they organize their mind the, the 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 community head is aware there's what they call a leader
Can you unmute yourself? Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Knows who can you hear me now? That's why I said I think the, the, the government doesn't want to get involved me because these people you are looking at as an informal miners. When you work with them, you know they are organized. They have their formal setting within them. In a typical teen mining site, there's what they call the leader. They have the women leader and they have the male leader. And at the end of the day, there's somebody that collects whatever material that is sold for a week. There's somebody that will come and collect. All this, they are they organize. That. There are people whose owner just to work, they get the material, they get paid. So the, the, it's kind of organized and it is hard for you to hear that. For those of you that have been combatants with internet, it is hard for you to hear that uh, they attack the mine site in. No. No, every community knows who and who are in that community. That work. But mostly okay. the areas that you hear that maybe all these banditry take care of are areas that maybe they have worked. They are now abandoned. Nobody goes there to mine. But uh, and also the other challenge that I feel might affect some of the, 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 the investors is community crisis. Community is an issue. If you want to get a, a, a site in just make sure the community you wanted to get your site in are okay with you, then you don't have a problem. I think um, from the summary of what you've just said, it is important for us to understand that the first um, uh, security um, structure starts from the community. When you are working in an organized community, um, yeah. I think that is where your security stands from and safety. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Uh, for that uh, answer. I think another question here is coming from uh, Oladumi Alabi. He's saying, um, what is your advice to, what is your advice to apply to state government in terms of fund generation from cassiterite mining and processing to cushion its financial drive? What is your advice? What can you say about, you know, generating funds from cassiterite mining? in yes. terms of other, another source of revenue to this pledge to state government. Okay. Um, the, the issue here is what the, 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 the only way they can be involved is if they own some of the sites. Let's say, for instance, now, as a, as a, as a, as a state government, there's a, 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 a Columbine site in the, um, in, in a Kakop, in Kokop. There's a Columbine site in Kokop where all you do, in fact, they don't dig. The tin one, they dig. This one, they don't dig. They get their tin, they get their cassiterite, and they are at the surface. So each time I go to the site and I talk to some of them, I feel, why won't government take over this site? As a government, you take over the site and then you boost your production. You, you, you bring in uh, the use of jigs because these people use pan. But you now, you use your jig, you use your, 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 your shaking table to boost production. In, you know, I think I'll make some contribution there too. You know, if we're looking at the way the, the policies, the mineral policies are actually structured, I think the best way for the states is to get involved with uh, some, uh, um, uh, um, you know, use a kind of uh, proposed vehicle means to you know, own a license. They can also participate in the business if they actually um, uh, uh, special SPV, using some SPVs, they can also participate in that. And from that, they can own some percentages by collaborating with some other investors, yeah. depending on what they are bringing on board. I think it's another way the state government can also participate. In some, I think some states have actually done that. Some of our experiences, uh, the NGO, we've done some work in um, in Ocean State, and we're also doing currently having some things to to actually structure out with the Nasara State Government. Um, we also advise them to also get involved in this because in that way, um, the issue of community consenting could actually be cushioned, and also depending on what they are bringing on board, state can also want to bring in processing facility. And by bringing a processing facility and collaborating with some other entrepreneurs and investors, I think it will go a long way for them to actually end um, interesting um, uh, shares from, from this. But when everything is left um, for artisanal miners, um, a crude way of mining might not actually bring in or attract that huge 
uh, track that kind of huge revenue that is actually anticipated from, from uh, mining. So I think, uh, please, let's go to, uh, we don't have much time. We have, we have, a, we, we have let's, a, let's have a Sule calling. Can we have the Sule calling, please? The federal, mines calling, officer's hand the federal mines officer's hand is up. The federal mines officer of What's the name? State Engineer is up. Engineer Ali, I think Engineer Ali or Sule Collins, who? Sule yeah, Collins. Okay, Sule Mohammed. Collins, please. Let's Sule Collins um, make um, uh, his contribution, please. Okay, thank you. I want to greet the presenter for a good job. Thank you very much, sir. She has, she has tried. Mine is uh, it's like uh, a question. Like, it was shown that some of the, there was no longer much interest in tin mining like it used to be. So I just want to ask, do we actually know the, the tonnage of the reserve? You know, there are some deposits that could be profitable being mined by the artisanal miners, but it's not profitable to be mined commercially. So I think that is one point that we should know, is the tonnage of the deposits still can still be mined commercially to still make profit by the government or by, by a big uh, mining industry. And also on the government side, the continual over-reliance on uh, crude oil has made them to, to neglect the mining aspect. You see that a lot of graduates that are miners today, you come out of the field, you have nothing to do, which is not supposed to be so. I think if this medium can also be used to advise the government to know that there are enormous economic uh, advantage in mining, it will go a long way to help this country. Thank you very much. Thank and you. my Thank you, Engineer. warmest Thank regard you. to the presenter. Thank you, Engineer. Thank you, Engineer yeah. Collins. I think, um, thank you for that um, contribution and also um, sort of question. I think we must, like I always say, we must keep talking. Uh, we must keep talking. One day they will listen and they will do what we are saying. This country belongs to us. And we must contribute in any way we can, you know, and for these things to actually work out. Because like what you are saying, we lack so much data when it comes to exploration of, uh, of solid mineral. So much data, uh, uh, most of the data we have are uh, mostly uh, restricted to regional levels, but some of the detailed ones are not there, but we still have a lot to do because you need to um, grace the ground for uh, an investor to come in. Nobody wants to throw his cash into a location where you think it will go into the drain. Uh, we know that cash or capital is coward. So um, based on this, so everybody wants to understand, yes, what I'm coming into mine, is it there enough quantity to lead me to maybe take me to, you know, to profitable uh, venture? So I think it's, it's, it's something that we need to keep talking about. Um, other aspect of uh, mining also in terms of resources, whatever information we have in our subsequent one, I think these are some of the areas we need to, also bring it forward to encourage whoever that wants to go into mining to actually come on board. Please, let's give a platform to Ridwan. Is it Ridwan Mohammed? I think with this, um, uh, after that, at all, you have something to say uh, before we please, we need to round it off. Yes, I think, but before that, I think they said the FMO uh, is around. Yeah. What's the name? He has said something now, he has said something. Yes. He has said something. Is it not the slate that just said something? Okay, Engineer Liu, are you there, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Go on. You are mute, sir. Unmute I'm mute, yourself. Sir. Mute, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, thank okay, you very much. Now. Thank you very much. I must Welcome. commend the, the organization for bringing this uh this uh engineer, the speaker for this wonderful uh, discussion. Uh, my view, she has said a lot on the just plateau, but there are so many questions that's lingering that has not been answered. 
And uh, one would say uh, the tin mining jobs has, has left a lot of scars on the environment. And um, how, how, would that, how would that be? How has that been not be addressed properly? You see, given the expected uh, sustainability of, of uh, mining, going by her definition of mining engineering, you discover that you have to consider reclamation when you are doing the evaluation. So at the stage of evaluation, when you now see how much the fund you are going to allocate for reclamation by all investors, then most of the deposit, a study have shown that more than 60% of the deposits in many cases, in many places will not be visible or viable at all. But we don't look at this side, we keep on going. So at the end of the my life, when you come to reclamation, everybody, everybody feel that, okay, this is not his own business. And that is actually what has happened to just plot you. And now she asks a question, why has the government refused to do something? We have various departments, the Minister of Mines and State, uh, Minister of Mines and State Development. The Mine Environmental Compliance Division is in power with this, with this responsibility. She keep on saying that we don't have enough no, no power. We have some manpower, but the question is, they have no, is it, are they, are they shy away from their responsibility? Even if you have 20 mine, mine engineers, um, 15 geologists in just plateau, and they are doing their job, obviously so many things will be addressed. So my question is, why is government refusing to use the necessary department, the appropriate department of environmental compliance, the officers in charge not doing their job properly in monitoring all the environmental challenges she has raised during her presentation? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that um, contribution. I think it boils down to that. Um, the, we have bodies that are responsible for this. Um, if their work is not done, definitely all of us will suffer it. So we keep advocating that the bodies, we you know, will do what we need to do at a various level. The bodies that are responsible for this, definitely. Um, at the end of the day, some of these videos don't stop here is online, it continues saying a lot of things after now, we normally post it and, you know, for the world to see and it's there online. So whatever we say here, if it doesn't, doesn't mean that we restrict it to some of us that are here, it's there. All the presentations have been done for the past six months, seven months are online. So it, it will speak volume. Anybody that cares to know or wants to hear, definitely one day is there. It's all, all um, recorded and it's there. So we keep doing what we need to do until um, everybody that is responsible uh, uh, are set to do the, the right thing. I think, um, please, uh, we have to give uh, the only real one. Are you there, Mohammed? if I'm correct? Okay. I can see your hands up. Okay, um, if he's not there, please, Atal, do you have something to say? And let's give Madame a closing a remark. Uh, um, for us, we have legs and 11 minutes to go, please. Okay, mine is just um, um, more like a contribution. I don't know, you see, Miners Association of Nigeria is in just also. And I believe they have a serious role to play when it comes to advocacy. Okay, because I think it's part of their, um, their setup also to try and see how they can um, Yes, make mining sustainable in Nigeria. So I'll, I don't know how it is operating over there in the jaws, but um, I think if they are doing their work, if they are doing what they should do, they should also help in doing because from what, from what Madam presented, we have lots of issues in jaws, especially um, the environmental aspect also. So and these are areas where each man should at least lend their own voice, especially to the government. They are, they, it's, it's, a, it's a strong platform that the government listens to, ministry listens to them. So I don't know, maybe if they're not strong enough in the plan. Okay, um, I thought it seems we've lost you there. I don't know your network um, is showing epileptic here. Okay, I think that is fine. Um, the much we could get from you is that you are advocating that demands 
should also be very strong. Uh, the last stakeholder meeting we went for, we went to organized by the, the Nigerian Geological Survey uh, called Mineral Clinic. The chairman of the miners of Nigeria. Yeah. These same environmental issues were the issues I raised there. So their chairman, the, the chairman of Miners Association of Nigeria, the Plastic State uh, chapter, he stood up and then he said that there's a there's a concrete, it's like a concrete uh, plan, which they came up with and now presented it to both the state and the federal government. But up till now, they are still waiting for their response. Hmm. This, but as yeah. that yeah. now, also, yeah. no plan, and even it's like well, they've not even called them to hear their view, and they have not written uh, back to them since they submitted that plan. Okay. okay, um, I think Dr. Mrs. Salao, do you want to say something before we close this, uh, on today's presentation? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. yes, yes, so my neighbor professor, Professor Solomon La. You brought everything out, something out. But what did I guess to know? We cannot say federal government, federal government for all the resources within our domain. Let's be part of it in whichever form. Though the mineral resources is in the domain exclusive list, but whatever applies to it is for the benefit of the community as well as the other stakeholders. Please and please, this platform is for us to showcase what the young geoscientists are experiencing in the field. What the old ones, like the professor, the academia, the retired civil servants, the present civil servants, and so ever, can contribute for us to streamline the challenges in the mining field. That is our goal, because mining matters. Whatever we much. do, mining matters. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. Dr. Mrs. Salau, mining matters indeed. I keep telling her that mining one of the oldest, is oldest industry in the world, as well as we are concerned. Nobody can stop mining. If you stop mining, we stop living. So mining is the game. It's the real thing for government to actually no matter what we do, we need to come back to mining. Uh, in mining, we can stop mining. We can stop crude oil, we can stop extracting food, but we can never stop mining. The day mining stops, the day the edge comes to an end because mining is related to the edge. So I don't see reason why mining could ever come to a stop. So all the metals, no matter whatever you bring out on edge today, is all about, it's all about metal, it's all about elements. So we must keep talking and keep talking and keep talking because mining matters more than any other thing at all. We can make money from. If we are looking for our economy to grow, definitely the government. The day the government recognizes the essence, the day government recognizes the essence of mining, that is the day we'll actually will be elevated from this poverty. So I thank every one of us that actually made it a wonderful day with us on IMSF today's presentation. Um, I thank engineer um, Uma for your wonderful work. You've done very excellently well. And we are proud of some of the women in our midst. They are showcasing what it takes to be involved in mining. And we'll keep bringing more women and bringing more women because I think their voice must be heard. So that we encourage any one of us that actually uh, women among us, uh, I want you to keep doing what you are doing. And before you know what's happening, your participation will be highly um, recognized um, beyond this platform. Uh, it's a platform for everybody. It's a platform you can actually contribute. It's a platform you can learn. It's a platform 
is a platform for for anyone who actually um, participate, anyone who actually involved in the solid mineral um, is a platform that you don't need to miss. So this is something we need to do. We do every month, especially last Mondays of every month. I um, mean, this month, again, we are coming back with another interesting um, topic that has to do with underground uh, water contamination as a result of mining activities surrounding us. You know, now we know why we, we, we don't play with advocacy that has to do with environment, because we know that once you don't take care of the environment, you stop living. That's why you see us, we, we advocate for um, all our initiative. As far as mining is concerned, we must pay adequate attention to the environment. The protection of environment is the key, is one of our, our key mission. So I want to encourage us to also join us also to look at this interesting topic. We're gonna to be bringing one of our best in experts that have done so much in terms of water industry. Um, he'll be joining us also on this platform. Uh, we'll be looking at all the issues that have to deal with uh, water contamination, especially the surface water and underground water. How are the ASM activities? How are the big companies? How are the processing and uh, activities of minerals have actually affected this uh, uh, these waters, whether underground or surface. So I will uh, want us to bear that in mind and keep a date with us as we bring you that topic. As we go forward, I think we we'll, we'll keep uh, growing. And I thank every one of us that have actually participated today. And I say a very good day to all of you. Have a wonderful day and may God bless us all. Thank you.